We're going to conclude our chapter on the metric tensor by looking at the inverse of the metric tensor. The inverse is indeed the contravariant metric tensor. I'm going to show you this. Here are some definitions, uh, results that we've had from before. We have the transformation of a contravariant vector here where the primes are on top, L's on top. Okay, here is on the bottom slant. So there are then superscripts. And here we have raised the index from a covariant vector to a contravariant one using the uh, inverse of the metric the tensor as we have shown earlier. So we have done it twice here, once with the unprime language and once with the prime language. Notice that the J, J are the same here and L gets raised up here. I, I the same and the K gets raised up there. All right, well, what about this first term here? This first term here, we can uh, have some fun and substitute these terms into this equation. That's what we're going to do. So when you carefully do that, uh, you will have for the uh, A prime L, you're going to have then the G prime LJ inverse and then the A prime J. And here you have this uh, derivative, partial derivative intact. And then for the AK, you're going to have just simply this goes zip down in there. So everything looks good. And what we're going to do here is we can substitute the A sub I in terms of the prime. And you might say, why are you doing all this? Well, you know, with these proofs, you play around and you get something that works good and then when you do it for someone else it looks like uh, wow where are you pulling these things out but we have experimented and worked this out this has been derived so i'm showing you the tricks here in a shortcut way so here we're going to substitute a uh, the a sub i and this is here a covariant so see they they line up this way the i i and the j j with the primes line up this way so if you substitute that in here everything gets written down again and this uh, piece goes in there and now you might see why we did that trick because by doing that trick we then have a primes everywhere we can pull the a primes out basically that was like the reason for the trick so here when you pull out the a prime then you get this everything else that's left over and since the vectors are arbitrary this must be zero on the inside and if you look at this and just simply group the terms and then add the term on the other side you get whoa you get here like the definition of uh, this is contravariant you see the primes up top slant this way and then the unprimes this way that's contravariant so we approved it we approved that the inverse of the covariant metric tensor transforms as a contravariant vector tensor that is really really cool so we can write it like this g super lj is the uh, inverse of the metric tensor now here is a very simple example in Cartesian coordinates. The metric tensor is all ones and the inverse all ones. Isn't that nice? Uh, here is a little homework problem for you. Uh, show that the uh, contravariant metric tensor for spherical coordinates uh, looks like this. That's very, very nice. Uh, there'll be one last section before you really complete chapter two and that'll be on contraction.